Greetings, dear friends. We come together every month around the time of the new moon. to meditate together, focusing the thought forms intended for creating world with the common good in focus. This is our meditation for the common good. In this cycle of Leo, we've been focusing and holding in our group chalice the topic within the sun's light of Leo, how we translate the law of economy through the new age education. Two weeks ago, we gather it in our circle, invoking the vision of the plan of how the principle of sharing could be translated into reality through the spreading and implementing of the soul-focused education. Today, we will be sounding ideas and thought forms that we will magnetize together through our meditation and radiate them into the field of humanity. Over to you, Rebecca. Thank you, Alexander. So just sounding the purpose for our project to remind ourselves and to help ourselves to align with what we're doing. So our purpose in this project is to support the manifestation of the spiritual plan for our planet through group meditation which focuses group intention for the common good, brings spiritual principles and laws to life, and magnetizes spirit-saturated thought forms of solution for practical action. And in this month of Leo, with our topic, we're working on the fixed cross which we're using to explore topic areas related to resourcing and sharing. We align with the sign of Leo and its ruler, the sun, bringing light to our minds and hearts as we seek to magnetize and energize thought forms, which will support new kinds of education for a sharing economy. As we draw together around this intention, I'll hand over to Tracy, who will lead us in the naming circle. Over to you, Tracy. Thank you, Rebecca. As we begin our focus today in this new moon meditation, the naming circle unites our hearts across distance. As we begin our alignment, and bring ourselves fully into our group work. By uniting our hearts in this way, we begin naturally to work telepathically through our group mind. The key to this telepathic work is in the etheric alignment, which creates the group field and allows it to become both a receiving and transmitting agent for higher ideas and energies. We will begin by calling our names into the circle, starting with our organizers, 
and action group area members. As your name is called, please unmute yourself. Say your name and where you are calling in from. For example, Tracy Arbor calling in from Novi, Michigan, USA. And as we go through this, let us turn our attention to our hearts and the heart center of the group gathered today as each one of us calls ourselves into this circle. Alexander. Hello, I'm Alexander calling from Kharkiv, Ukraine. Welcome. Rebecca. Hello, I'm Rebecca calling from just north of Brisbane in Queensland on the Sunshine Coast in Australia. Welcome. Birgi. Greetings, Birgitte calling in from Slagelse in Denmark. Welcome. Gillian. Hello everyone, I'm Gillian from the North Norfolk coast in UK. Welcome. Daniela. Greetings everyone, I'm calling from Brussels, Belgium. Welcome. Andrea. Andrea. Sorry, I thought I was unmuted. Hi, everyone. This is Andrea Ross, and I'm calling from Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, in the United States of America. Welcome. Anne. Hello, this is Anne Creter from Riverton, New Jersey, outside of Philadelphia. Welcome. Aneta. Hello, this is Annette Löffler from Denmark, Sorø in Denmark. Welcome. Avon. Avon calling in from San Francisco, birthplace of the United States of the United Nations, rather, and from the USA. Welcome. Barbara. Unmute yourself. Welcome, Barbara. Bernard. Yeah, Bernard from France. Welcome. Welcome. Betty. Betty from Denmark. Welcome. Celeste. Celeste from uh, Perth, Ontario, Canada. Hello. Hello. Welcome. Cheryl. Uh, greetings. Cheryl Binzen calling in from Ames, Iowa, USA. Welcome. Daniel. Daniel, please unmute yourself. Welcome. Darcy.
Darcy is self-muted, so I cannot. Yes, um, welcome, Darcy. Yeah. Hello, I'm Ditte. I'm from Kirkehuling in Denmark. Welcome. Elisa. I'm sorry, Elisa Maria. <laughs> Hello, Elisa from uh, nearby between Rio and Sao Paulo in the mountains in Brazil, South America. Welcome. Thank you. Eva. You're welcome. Eva. Welcome, Eva. Francis. Good morning, it's Francis calling from Victoria, British Columbia, Canada. Welcome. Fred. I did seem to be self-muted. Welcome. Irania. Hello. I am Irina from Belarus. Welcome. John. Horan. Welcome and thank you. I am that and that am I. Welcome. Dan Sedvey. Welcome, John. Kiki. Welcome, Kiki. Oh, there you are. <laughs> Hello. Lynn. Hello, um, it's Lynn Green from Columbus, Ohio, US. Welcome, welcome. Maria Cristina. Maria Cristina. Hi, Cristina Donadieu in the Arizona Sonora Desert, um, USA side. Greetings. Welcome. Martha. Hello everyone, Martha Gallagher from Weehawken, New Jersey, USA. Welcome. Martine. Hello everyone, this is Martine from Belgium. Welcome. Natalie. Natalie from the top of the north, the South Island of New Zealand. Welcome. I mean, wow. uh, welcome, Nicole.
Hello, this is Nicole from Baltimore, Maryland, USA. Welcome. Welcome. Risa. Risa has sent a message saying that she cannot unmute, but she's here. Welcome. Sanjay. Welcome. Yo. This is Yoel from Southern California in the United States. Greetings to everyone. Greetings and welcome. And um, I, th I think we might have skipped Celeste further up the list. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> Celeste. You didn't skip me. I'm still here in Perth, Ontario, Canada. <laughs> Hello. Great. My mistake. My apologies. Thank you. Oh, that's okay. Well, thank you, everyone. Now that we are linked together as a group, let us share a few moments in silence to align, forming a triangle between Shambhala, the hierarchy, and humanity. May our efforts be of the highest vibration in selfless service for our purpose.
so as we come together through that silence, just introducing our action area group for today. And they and other interested meditators gathered at the full moon, as Alexander said, to, to um, contemplate our topic um, at the first full moon of Leo this month. Um, and the impressions generated have been held and brooded over by the action area group and other subjective meditators and um, perhaps many of you who we thank for your input into the flow into the chalice um, today. Um, so this month our action area group is made up of Begita, Alexander and Gillian and also Anna and Martha have been with us as we prepared. Um, they will not be vocalising anything today but their presence and their input has gone into making um, the webinar giving it substance today. Um, Martha is with us um, and will be remaining subjective in this part of the webinar, but I will um, um, offer some thoughts that she has put together into the chalice as well. So I'll hand over now to Begita who will begin our action area group today. Over to you, Begita. Apologies before Birgitta will start. I just want to note that Anna has joined us. I'm not sure if Anna, uh, you're, you're unmuted. Yes, Are you there? thank you. Oh. Thank you. I was a bit late. Thank you. Greetings. Greetings, Anna. Thank Over you. to you, Birgitta. I will start with three quotes and then a little thoughts. Um, and the three quotes, they are from Cosmic Fire and White Magic. And the first one from Cosmic Fire, from page 568. The third law is the law of economy and is the law which adjusts all that concerns the material and spiritual evolution of the cosmos to the best possible advantage and with the least expenditure of force. It makes perfect each atom of time and each eternal period and carries all onward and upward and through with the least possible effort with the proper adjustment of equilibrium and with the necessary rate of rhythm. Unevenness of rhythm is really the illusion of time and does not exist in the cosmic center. We need to ponder on this, for it holds the secret of peace and we need to grasp the significance of the word through, for it describes the next racial expansion of consciousness and has an occult meaning. And then a quote in White Magic, page 323. The man who aims at providing a point of contact between conditions of chaos and those who work for constructive ends and order should likewise use the most necessary factor of common sense in all that he does. 
This involves always obedience to the law of economy of force due to discrimination and a true sense of values. And the last quote from Cosmic Fire, page 198. On the law of economy, man hears sound permeates matter and is the basis of its subsequent heterogeneity. So translating the law of economic through new age education could mean to learn to control and involve all our etheric and physical energies, including our time and direction and movement in life. As the forms evolve and the rhythm becomes balanced and clear, we move upward and through to the heart center and the soul qualities can be manifested and so shine in service for our fellow men. Sound connects with the law of economy and hearing is connected with unity. Maybe silence is the keynote to education in the new age, using silence to adjust to the inner divine truth. And we could master the law of economy by using silence to create unity and create the needed new magnetic forms for the hierarchy to emerge into the fourth kingdom.
So from Martha, in this magical moment of Leo New Moon, planet Earth receives the synergized energy from the three suns as one, the physical sun, the heart of the sun, and the central spiritual sun. This synthetic energy illumines and strengthens cooperation between the solar lord, representing Ray 2, and the planetary personality, Ray 3. Humanity stands in witness to and strives to achieve the benefits by strengthening its own practice of cooperation of Rays 2, the Ray of Education, with Ray 3, the Law of Economy. Humanity learns to communicate through all lifelong learning processes, the chalice of accumulated wisdom, so as to awaken soul consciousness. Further, humanity learns to demonstrate increasing skill in the wise use of force in assistance to building of more enlightened and universal systems on behalf of the common good. Thus, humanity develops skill in harmonizing the rays. One, Vulcan. Two, Neptune, esoteric ruler, and sorry, Vulcan, exoteric ruler of Ray 1, 2, Neptune, esoteric ruler, and 7, Ray 7, Uranus, the hierarchical ruler. This is how humanity finds joy through beauty. I'm just inviting you, Anna, if you would like to offer something now. Well, the, ray, the importance of Ray 4 is also very important. Uh, it creates this uh, balance between ray one and seven, between the will, divine will and uh, manifested will. And um, the ray four is also related to the sun and uh, Mercury. So, it is important to create this uh, chalice of positive, for positive resonance to the plans of hierarchy. And uh, in Leo, this possibility is uh, especially new moon, uh, very strong because new moon sort of creates a new patterns and so we can we can uh, be successful in our aspiration in the in, during this time mm. so yes the ray four is 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 very important to get hold of and uh, And uh, mm -hmm. 
it's because it is a balancing array, so it, it is uh, related uh, to alignments which we create in our energy bodies. So we have to examine how our energy circulates and uh, to see uh, which is the responsive energies uh, which are controlling and to see that the higher centers are positive and the lower centers are negative receptive to create the, la the, the right, the correct balance. And uh, yes, so this economy based on the correct alignments and the same in any in, in material world and the same in the spiritual, in the energetic world, creating the alignments uh, would be very useful and uh, efficient. That's all. We have to create sort of the correct vortexes of energies. And this, this vortexes, if they will be uh, positive with higher energies, they will circulate into the bigger, in a big world, in a planetary, in a cosmic world. And we will change the atmosphere, change the grid. Thank you. introduction the, of the principle of sharing into the economy to the world economy is related to the process of humanity taking the first initiation shifting into the soul consciousness Such shift cannot happen within the day or two or a year or two. It's a gradual process. In order to be manifested, it should be done in accordance with the law of economy. It should become the basic recognized principle. And for that, the role of education is essential. As education helps us to create the path that allows each individual, each soul incarnated, in a body of a child or in a body of an adult who is open to the shift from solar plexus to the heart center. The dominant economic model that's been around for millennia is the model of greed. 
model of self-interest, model of self-satisfying uh, own needs. And as humanity evolves as a species, and as each individual moves on the path of own development, we come that path shifting from solar plexus orientation to the heart center orientation. And esoterically, this is the basis of the current crisis that is reflected in each field of human endeavor. So as we work with the energies of Leo, we can invoke the vision of the axis Leo and Aquarius shifting from own individual interest to the interest of a wider group from Leo to Aquarius. And that is a great possibility. And it that's is the law of evolutionary movement. Uh, it, it is it is so this this ability to transform transmute this uh, lower astral energies forces to the cards energies is it is achieved by these alignments which is really extension we extend Oh, I haven't finished. Now we extend ourselves. We extend ourselves from solar plexus, from astral body. We extend extend towards the mind, throat chakra. We think, we analyze, we inspect our intentions. And thus we create the bridge towards the heart, the fourth chakra. First we align the sixth body, and the throat, the mental, emotion, and uh, and a ment and a mental body, and thus we create a meeting point in a heart which is related to the soul's love petals, and uh, that's that's become a portal for the high energies from a buddhic plan and then we become the more instrument of the souls and living self-centered right and then uh, and then we understand uh, our identity 
what who we are and our mission. Thank you. Gillian, please. Uh, education will need to be different in the new age. Well educated will not mean having a lot of knowledge, although this will be important. People will need the wisdom to use that knowledge for humanity's welfare and spiritual enlightenment. Teacher training will need to be adapted to encourage less emphasis on monetary reward and to put more emphasis on cooperation in group work, along with awareness of social responsibility. At the beginning of school life, children should be treated as individuals. Basic meditation, such as sitting quietly for a few minutes each day to think on a given subject could begin. The subject would be relevant to them and designed to encourage benevolent natures. Thoughts could be voiced and discussed afterwards, depending on the wishes of each child. All children would be involved in participating in a system devised to encourage good behaviour and willingness to learn. It is important for systems to be in place from the start of school life, which will avoid any child being excluded in the future. Much potential talent and usefulness can be wasted by exclusion. Group work would become normal. All participants in a group would be supportive of all others and ideas for projects would be welcomed from anyone. There should be no adverse reactions to any ideas, only encouraging suggestions if deemed necessary. The idea of the various bodies, physical, emotional, mental, etc., could be mentioned in a casual way from time to time as soon as possible. This would plant the idea to gradually exp expand in their minds. As they mature, the children could go out into the community to give help where needed. They could help the old, vulnerable and disabled, along with input into any worthwhile projects already underway. They might be able to come up with new projects themselves, giving them added interest. Education should become more relevant to a soul aware community, humanity, sorry. Subjects such as art, music and horticultural could be become more widely used. Awareness of international cooperation and its benefits should be raised. Children should be encouraged to look at the night sky when possible and to develop an interest in it. Most importantly, all children should feel loved and appreciated, thereby building their self-confidence to help them to be helpful in the future. Yes, it's good. Education is very important. Yes, for the service and the prior to this, to the healing, to the healing of people and uh, bringing a new esoteric psychology and manifestation and healing from all these traumatic uh, fears and um, different uh, manipulation and. Uh, no. and, and Excuse me, Anna. Uh, uh, we have we have more time for sharing of the meditation. Okay, I'm muted. So let's have a silence and go into meditation. We go into meditation. We stand in our circle, blending our hearts and minds. We align with the fire of love in our group heart.
we recognize ourselves as part of the heart of the World Server Group. and identified with the heart of the World Server Group. We are the living bridge between humanity and hierarchy. Radiance we are and power. We stand forever with our hands stretched out, linking the heavens and the earth, the inner world of meaning with the subtle world of glamour. We reach into the light and bring it down to meet the need. We reach into the silent place and bring from thence the gift of understanding. Thus with the light we work and turn the darkness into day. We open our group field to the energies of Leo. And we invoke the energies of the fixed crust The fixed crust is the crust of transmutation. Desire becomes aspiration. And selfishness is transformed into selflessness. The sun rules all three levels in Leo. Let us sense the light of the physical etheric sun. And we sense the heart of the sun. And we align with the central spiritual sun.
I am that and that am I. As a group and through our group heart, we hold our group chalice in the light as we offer some synthesized seed thoughts for today's theme. Within the sun's light of Leo, translating the law of economy through the new age education. Let silence be mastered, allowing the silent voice to be heard. Anna? Alexander? The vision of the shift from the solar plexus to the heart center of humanity. From Leo to Aquarius. Um, this is a part sentence taken from Esoteric Psychology 2, page 655. It's about the new group of world servers. Their method is the method of education. They will mould public opinion. Rebecca? Humanity learns to communicate through all lifelong learning processes. The chalice of accumulated wisdom so as to awaken soul consciousness. We lift the group chalice towards the light of Leo. May the spiritual hierarchy bless the vision within the sun's light of Leo, translating the law of economy through the new age education and common good for all.
in in Leo we have personality and soul meeting each other and uh, it's what Christ was saying that it's uh, taking over is taking place it's a spiritual taking over taking place and uh, two sides the dweller and the angel meet each other and We see the light of the vision flow into the vibrant networks of triangles all over the world and manifesting through right human relations, love and unity. We hold the ideal of common good, magnetic and attracting for all. from the point of light within the mind of God. Let light stream forth into the minds of men. Let light descend on earth. From the point of love within the heart of God, let love stream forth into the hearts of men. May Christ return to earth. From the center where the will of God is known, let purpose guide the little wills of men, the purpose which the masters know and serve. From the center which we call the race of men, let the plan of love and light work out and may it seal the door where evil dwells. Let light and love and power restore the plan on earth.
the one who travels I started to say, can I say or not? The one who travels on a field of knowledge is like a lion walking through the desert. Who will be responding to this lion? Only another lion free of fear. Thank you, everyone. We will now open the, our lines for Community Impressions Board and also for group sharing. Uh, our Community Impressions Board can be reached through the link that Alexander will put into the chat box where we can share our ideas and impressions from this lovely meditation we just have had it and are sharing. So we open group sharing at this time. If anybody would like to share, please raise your hand and I believe Alexander will call on you and then you can unmute yourself. Uh, you can also write your impressions in the chat box if you would like. Thank you. Andrea, please unmute yourself. I just want to thank Jillian, all of you, but Jillian's comment on her concept of what a future educational process could be for our children was quite beautiful. And something sort of occurred to me that, that, that in addition to all that she said and what I particularly loved was the fact that she suggested that children be made to look up into the stars. And I think that encouraging children to look up and out and kindling curiosity and wonder and begins that focus from within to without and sort of is saying what Alexander commented on, which I think is also one of the most important parts is that transition from the solar plexus to the heart center and the energy that is there. Um, there's something about sort of transmuting the competition within the attachment to knowledge into more of a kindling of learning and acquiring information of beauty and wonder and not just facts and figures and competitive comparison to others of that type of knowledge. Thank you, Julian. Thank you all. Lynn, please. Um, I would just like to um, mention that um, it's interesting that um, um, with all we've been talking about, um, how it all fits so well um, in the uh, transition from Leo to Virgo. Um, you folks spoke last time about how we, we're having a Leo new moon, but um, the full moon that we're working toward is on the cusp between Leo and Virgo, uh, Virgo being the birth of Christ consciousness um, from the womb of matter. And uh, also, uh, I would like to add that um, I can testify to the emergence of these new ideas um, about education that uh, Jillian spoke of. And um, because I was an elementary teacher for a long time um, and uh, took the court college courses, of course, and the emphasis is being put on um, 
not that it's easy to make this transition in a classroom with so many students, but the emphasis is being put on um, um, holistic education, experiential, self-directed uh, sorts of things, analyzing, synthesizing, problem solving. Um, and that comes a lot through group work, um, which is, is being taught to teachers to use small groups in their classroom um, to work on projects. Um, also, uh, and many of these things I know are talked about in education in the new age and sort of um, are suggested in, in the words of the times. Um, and it does lead to lifelong learning. And uh, also like at the higher grades, I taught in elementary at the higher grades. Uh, well, even in elementary school, we integrated, we used projects to integrate subjects, including art and music, um, drawing, uh, speaking, all these sorts of things were used. Um, skills like uh, analyzing, synthesizing, um, drawing conclusions, evaluation, those sorts of uh, skills were taught or were encouraged. <clears throat> so I think that's really good news. Um, Cooperative education, I think, is one term for, for a lot of this. And also, um, people were addressing uh, the physical etheric body, the emotional body, the mental body, and seeing, you know, uh, trying to have, a again, the holistic education. So these are modern directions that are actually emerging in my little world in Ohio and I imagine in many more places. But I also thought about how important, as Sanjay said last time, remote learning is for making education accessible to many, many, many more people. Uh, I think I've read about how at the time of um, the emergence of unions, the English master, um, was behind much of that, even though it was carried out by disciples below the third degree so that uh, the ideas could reach people who hadn't had the uh, educational opportunities before. And part of um, that union movement uh, brought in education for many, many, many more people so that in um, parts of the world, at least the uh, the so-called masses were educated as well as people, um, uh, nobility in the Middle Ages. So there is so much going on that is seemingly so important in, and in remote learning. Um, it certainly can be self-directed, but I think it's good if there's more interaction in if uh, um, it could be set up that or, um, organized somehow so that uh, facilitators, teachers were available um, for many, many people. And I also wondered about an idea that came to me as I thought about this, if there would be some way that we could meditate into being some sort of basic universal curriculum um, that would involve reading, writing, math, and science. Of course, not social studies because we would have to have a world history that I'm not sure we're quite ready for yet. Um, history is so subjective, depending on where you live, of course. But all of this seems to encourage lifelong learning, which I know uh, Alice Bailey and the Tibetan were certainly behind. Um, and I do agree, too, that in this new direction that education is taking at all levels, that we need to incorporate uh, quiet thought, study, and service. Um, just like the three pillars that DK talks about, meditation, study, and service. So there's, uh, oh, also, I think, in identify and, and um, respecting um, children, respecting learners, um, astrology could be a very, very useful tool. Uh, it could be turned to 
um, knowing, turn to use, usefulness in knowing yourself, which I think is what we want to encourage in our students. Um, knowing yourself, knowing your abilities, um, being inspired, not criticized to develop your, your abilities um, in order to contribute to the larger world. Okay, I think that's it for me. I know that was a lot, um, but that's it for me. Thank you, Lynn. Maria Cristina, if you would like to share anything, you're unmuted. Thank you. Um, thank you all. I was very fruitful. I am that, and that am I. Um, in a sense, sums up that knowing of yourself that is implied by education, a function, if you will, a quality of the second ray, that of consciousness, that of relationship. The Tibetan indeed mentions in education and of new age, that education is the science and the technique of building the Antakarana. I am that and that am I would sum up quite a bridge, lifelong learning that we are engaged in even today. That bridge of consciousness beginning with the younger ones and the development of the lower mind um, that bridging between an understanding beginning with oneself's mind and brain, I am the etheric body, the four centers, the solar plexus, the heart, the little self, and then eventually the mind and the brain and the soul um, develop being expression of that alignment. I, I am that. And eventually, the higher mind, the illumination. So it's a linking up of our inner selves in a way, but also with, of course, our environment. Um, you know, that reflection, that field of service, the greater whole in which we play our part. So it was a very beautiful meditation and much fruitful. Um, thank you all. Thank you, Maria Cristina. Hello, it's just Rebecca. I was just trying to post in the chat. Maybe you can help Alexander. I'm not very good at it. Um, the work, the link to the work that's been done just in relation to what you were saying, Lynn, about um, the global common elements of education 
um, the work that's been done on the World Core Curriculum um, by Robert Muller and um, yeah, so if the link could be posted there, there's some interesting things to consider in um, what's the work that's been done um, on that curriculum. Uh, Rebecca, I can see the link is there now in the chat and I just tried it, it's working. So yeah, anyone interested could follow the link. Thank you. Thank you, Rebecca. Ava, please unmute yourself. I just want to build on what Rebecca has said. Um, Gloria Crook is the one who actually built the curriculum um, based upon a, a, a a speech that our dear Robert Muller made about the importance of education and uh, bringing forward um, and translating the esoteric wisdom and teaching from um, prenatal all the way through. And she has also been so remarkable in bringing forward a, um, a, you know, just uh, uh, that focus of the intergenerational approach and the holistic approach and our connection with um, the importance of understanding the, the, the soul aspect within humanity, but also the larger divinity of all life and the one life. So that idea of the one economy fits in with the idea of the identification as the one life and the one humanity uh, within the focus point of education. And she also has had and cont has continued even now, I spoke with her relatively recently um, with the model United Nations uh, for basically uh, teenagers. And so it begins a global education at an as another young age. Thank you. Thank you, Avon. Yes, thank you, Avon, because I was kind of stabbing in the dark trying to remember that. So thank you for um, acknowledging and expanding on Gloria's work. We are now coming close to the end of our sharing section of our time together. If anyone has any last comments, please. So thanks to all for joining today this circle and for continuous focused intention in our meditative work for the common good. And to end our this section of our time together today. Rebecca, do we have any mantra to sound? I have two short quotations to sound um, as we close. The first one is um, from Zoltán Kadai, who's the Hungarian musician and amazing music educator. And he says, let us take our children seriously. Everything else follows from this. Only the best is good enough for a child.
And from Leaves of Moya's Garden 1, Shloka 110. All things will take their designated places, and many things will come to pass, and we shall manifest the needed signs. Not always does the eye perceive the sun's rays, but the sun ever warms the earth. Love's warmth is lavished upon you, and your spirit has no room for a cold barrenness of soul. Oh. Thank you. And as always, we have an extra time together following our work. We invite those of you who have extra time and interest to stay a little bit longer that we could look together into the next cycle and share ideas what could be the topic for our work together in the next cycle. And as we mentioned previously, this month is special with the two full moons in the same sign of Leo. And starting next new moon, we will first have the Meditation in the full moon of one sign, followed by the new moon in the other sign. And that changes the rhythm of our work together in the, uh, this project. So as we will move into the next cycle uh, of Burger, our focus in will be on the theme of right relations and introducing measure of peace into relations on all the levels and that is the theme of our uh, that we work with in the science of mutable cross and we will start meditating on that under the full moon of leo of the fixed sign and so it's we invite us to explore together what that could mean for us in our work uh, with transition from one sign to another and maybe it could would be merge of two themes together and um, or maybe something else so i just invite us to reflect together and suggest any topics that could be in our focus in the next cycle of Virgo.
it's Rebecca again. Um, just, um, I think it was Andrea who was speaking about um, what was um, said by Gillian about the idea of um, encouraging children to look up and out. And it just brings to mind um, the relationship between the stars and the planets and the earth. And um, so I was thinking about the topic of harmonization with the earth and the stars through agriculture and the sharing and distribution of food. That seems uh, like a very effective way to blend Virgo, Earth, with Leo, Sun. And um, it, it brings to mind certain things like the uh, different ways of growing that um, it, it is a uh, very conserving of the earth. To... It's a very good idea. And thank you all for the meditation today. Oh, thank you. I just am thinking of the Sphinx, Leo and Virgo, the Sphinx. Lynn, please unmute yourself. Um, it, um, I just thought I would add that um, it's, I think it's interesting to note that there that DK says there will be a time when uh, Leo and Virgo are just one sign. Um, I wonder if that doesn't speak to the to uh, humanity's growth <laughs> and uh, the realization of uh, a more advanced consciousness. Just an aside. Elisa, your hand was raised, so you unmuted if you still would like to share. Yes, just to say, to give a good new, I, I hope. We have a group in Sao Paulo with a, a couple who stands uh, and give special classes for children in meditation. And uh, I will share later the their direction email or the, their page for you to to know that that's something so beautiful and uh, loveliness when they share their experience that maybe you would be very happy with that uh, new from how our South America who's needing <laughs> those kind of uh, initiative. Thank you. It was a very, very good meditation you shared today. I was very touched about. Thank you.
Thank you, Elisa. It's Rebecca again, and um, I'm just um, wanting to throw into the discussion the thought that um, uh, meditation as part of education or meditation for children is a topic that would also fit into um, the theme of harmonizing and right relationships. Of course, of course. That's another good news you share with us that that's fantastic. We are needing to be reminded about good things here in South America. <laughs> Not only in South America either. <laughs> we all need to be reminded of that. <laughs> yes, and to be hopeful to the child. I'd like to add to uh, what Rebecca just said um, through the education and all that, um, since that's what we discussed today. But, uh, you know, the blending of Leo with Virgo and uh, when we think of Virgo and everything that we're trying to do in this day and age, um, separating the wheat from the chaff is what came to me. So I just wanted to share that because that I think that kind of covers covers everything, what's most important, you know, looking out what isn't, and as opposed to what is, whether it's through agriculture and distributing food or through its education, what we are educating our children um, about, you know, separating what's, what's really not relevant and will not help them with their growth and uh, changing the planet. So uh, separating the wheat from the chaff came to me. Thanks. Do we want to consider um, right relations with Davis, with the Deva Kingdom? Possibly. And thank you for bringing at least building it into the work we do, because I think there's a common misunderstanding among the new group of world servers that. We actually are the ones that need to learn how to be a, a cultist and give direction to the Davis. The Davis are kind of waiting for us to um, direct the focus. I, it's a new thought to me, at least. The Davis are completely receptive. They they are not. Um, they are not. They do not have within themselves the positive polarity, their, their total, total receptivity. And I think it's a, a very useful thing to um, parse that out. Thank you. Yeah, I have to agree that that's very important because that's how we're going to be able to bring manifestation in is through that communication, uh, through that David communication. I think that's that's one of a, a key point. So thank you for bringing that up. I can attest experientially from my backyard garden that uh, the response to love is. Um, phenomenal. And, and I, I think our children, um, it's such a perfect age. With we, what Julian said was right, to look up at the stars and to look into themselves, to know their power and all that, all that life would support that power, to, to introduce them to the David Kingdom at such an early age is really a beautiful thing. It's 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 the practice that Findhorn has found discovered. I just have to say we used to do something like that with fairy tales and different things like that, and somehow that just yes 
over the recent years just has gone by the wayside. So yeah, bringing back the imagination and the well and innocent the imagination and the, yeah. the you're you know, speaking different truth than say uh, Harry Potter speaks to magic, but not to the innocence and the purity of of focused intention. Exactly, exactly. Some of the things that we grew up with were magical, you know, and we thought anything was possible kind of thing, you know, and we could bring about that possibility. And I think we've, it's become so pragmatic anymore and practical use. And, and if it isn't, you know, I think, uh, I think Einstein was the one that said something about the imagination without that, you have nothing, you know, so. Sure. And DK says we should use our imagination as we stepped on step onto the path to try to develop intuition, I believe. Again, imagination, very important. And the children are innately imaginative if we allow them to be. That's right. It just needs to be refined, fed. Thank you, dear friend. Yeah, I'm sorry. Um, sorry, I have to step in at this moment. Um, I think it was a good uh, ignition of uh, ideas thrown into the group chalice for the next cycle. I uh, in, suggest we continue this exchange uh, via email and uh, uh, we invite to join you to the meeting of the subjective group. Uh, which will be deciding on the topic for the next cycle. And if you're interested in that, please email us and uh, we will share that information with you. Uh, I'm just wrapping it up this quickly. We had only 15 minutes for this segment as we have to uh, start uh, another program, uh, the vigil meditation. Thank you um, so much, Alex and Jeff. Thank you. Thanks everyone and uh, the fire of our work grows stronger. Much love.